Hey guys, uh, Nanman here. I'm going to be bringing you guys another StarCraft 2 cast. Uh, before we get into it, I just want to say thank you for everyone who's been watching uh, the cast that I've been doing on my YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Nanman is where I'm going to be putting up all of the Heart of the Swarm stuff. And we are running out of time for the beta because it is closing in, I don't know, what are we at, 10 days or so? Uh, on March 1st is when they're taking it offline, so... If you guys are playing, have the beta, start gaming hardcore now so you can get in as many games as possible. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the last cast, but we're going to continue a little bit with the Protoss theme. And we're going to jump into a PvP here. Um, I'm going to kind of bounce around and I want to get at least one matchup from every single... Um, or I, I want to get at least one game from every single matchup. Um, I'm doing a PvP today. Next week or so, I'll be doing a PvT. Uh, and then we'll move in, do some of the Terran matchups, and then move in and do some of the Zerg matchups. All that good stuff there. Um, I also want to let you guys know, if you guys haven't seen YouTube.com slash Games, I've been putting up a lot of other stuff over there. Some Magic the Gathering content has already been put up. I'm going to my first Friday Night Magic this week, so there'll be content from that as well. Um, but let's jump into the game, shall we? We'll talk a little bit more of some of the other projects I'm working on and all that good stuff. But uh, here we go. Jumping into things. Let's get those introductions under the underway here. Um, spawning up here in that northwest position it is going to be our red Protoss player from Root Gaming. He is known as Minigun. And his opponent spawning down here in the southeast position. It is our blue Protoss player from LGIM. He is known as Seed. And if anybody you looking in the, the little camera there, my cat has decided to uh, jump up on my chair. Uh, but this is going to be Cloud Kingdom is going to be the map. This is something that you guys should be very familiar with since it is in the ladder pool currently in Wings of Liberty and the Heart of the Swarm. It's also very, very common in a lot of the tournaments out there. But if you aren't as familiar with it, maybe you have it thumbs down and you're like, I hated it when I played it, I don't like playing it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about it. Um, you see there are two watchtowers located in the center of the map here. And these kind of guard the main entrance um, kind of across the line. This is more or less the, the dividing line um, between the two players here. They'll, they'll go up and down this ramp to get over to the um, opposing sides. And also this does get a little bit of intel of when an opponent will leave their base. Now they are located on the low ground, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So if you have control of the high ground here, you can essentially prevent your opponent from taking those watchtowers. Um, minigun, being very, very smart, checking his natural here. Um, because the way that this is set up, it's very easy to take your natural, but it's also um, easier to do some proxies here. We see occasionally people go for the double proxy gate there, as the same over here around your third base. Minigun being very active and checking that out. Um, that's another thing to keep in mind with the way that this map is laid out, is that the third base is right below your nat or main base here. It's connected to your natural. Um, and there are ramps here, more paths along over to the uh, left and right, respectively, so you can get over to your opponent's side of the map there. But uh, that's something that could play a big factor. Blink could be a very, very uh, strong sort of style that we could see these players go for because of the ability to blink up into your opponent's base pretty much from anywhere. You know, your natural, your third base, all can connect into the main base. And now that you can get that uh, mothership core before you need to even get a robotics, you can go for a blink, get that mothership core, and just fly over here into your opponent's side and just start blinking in. But now we've been seeing a lot more of that Stargate play come out from players, so we're going to have to wait and see what they're going to be deciding on now. Uh, we do see a probe scout coming in here from Minigun. We'll get to see Zealot just popped out, see a Chrono Boost coming down on the Stalker here, sees Kate double gas, and he also gets to see those beams of light coming off the Nexus that indicates that the Mothership Core uh, is being produced right now. And boom, there she is. Uh, we've also got Warp Gate technology coming out for C, and over here we've got the uh, pretty much similar actions from Minigun with the exception of he is neglected getting that Mothership Core for the time being. Um, he feels completely fine with just going for the more economic route and, and going for that probe uh, buildup at this point. We see he is slightly ahead there, 23 to 21, and that's just one thing to keep in mind is that because he didn't go for this, he is able to get in a few more of those probes. But now we see that uh, Seed's completely content with saying, all right, 
for Zealot Stalker, Mothership, go out on the map, try to make something happen. So Minigun is going to be delaying this as much as possible here. Going to be uh, starting to weaken down that Zealot just a little bit, take down some of his shields. But he cannot uh, stay and fight too much because Zealot and Stalker will be able to take out this uh, one lone Stalker by himself. But second one pops out for Minigun, so now it's going to be coming down to that micro battle. And there's the third Stalker coming out. And this is a great defense here for Minigun, but he's got to be careful. There we do see that the Mothership is going to start attacking there. It is going to be using that Photon overcharge allowing him to basically turn into um, a floating cannon um, able to attack gr um, those ground units there and uh, the three stalker defense very very powerful there we do see the mothership core pops out here from minigun and how many pros were killed off so only one did weaken down another one there um, got some good scouting intel of, of what minigun was going for here um, you know did get to see that it is the potential blink follow up here and there's the uh, robotic facility but we do see the stalkers chasing down he's like I know this mothership core went over here where is he but he is flying over here in the uh, north position up at the same time we do see two more gates and robotics coming down here for C now he originally was going for stargate tech oh yep there it is uh, does have it already finished up here We've got that oracle coming down first one did does pop out uh, oracles are kind of a little bit of flying spellcaster very very weak though we see they only have 60 um, shields as well as 100 uh, 100 life um, but they do have that envision which allows them to be able to detect cloak and burrow units for 60 seconds they also have that uh, revelation which gives them vision of a set of units for 60 seconds and the main thing that they're used for is this pulsar beam uh, which allows them to be able to attack enemy ground units now, how much is that? The, up, yeah, so it, it does a lot of damage to um, light units there. So great against uh, harassment at mineral lines. Does 25 damage versus light units. 15 damage base uh, for their just kind of base attack here. And Stalker's moving the way forward, getting a little bit uh, too excited. But they did get a good count of that army with the two sentries, three zealots there. So that makes it a little bit harder for him to be able to kind of engage at this point. Now, he does have Blink almost finished up here. We could see some warp in soon, but same time looks like the oracle came in to try to do some harassment was able to kill off three more probes and all that now there's another warp in here so that was good for um seed to be able to do that it allowed him to get his uh one immortal out it allowed him to kill off a few probes and prevent any more reinforcements from coming out um over on uh this off offensive pylon at this point because he had to warp in a few stalkers back at home that's why we see these guys heading on over here now we also see that there is a sentry here so he can try to force field keep some of those units in and there does get the force field trapping in those morals we do see that nice um ability there of the time warp any units inside of those bubbles are slowed down and uh so that you know is definitely very important for those engagements there keep those units kind of um, not really moving out too much, but there's the offensive link going into the main base going to pick off a couple of those uh, Probes mining from their assimilators there now with the immortals coming out You can't really do too much more damage So it does blink out there without losing a single stalker and behind this aggression we see minigun is expanding here It's got its nexus up. Uh, we do see that uh, Seed is going to be starting to move out, but this is, puts him in a difficult position He does use the uh, mothership's ability there to uh, kind of empower his um, um, Nexus there, so it does turn into a, a cannon, um, and we see Pylon going down as well as the Nexus here. So Seed feeling very um, content with the force that he has, with a couple of Immortals he's got mixed in, quite a few Zelts and Stalkers, that he can defend uh, well enough against those sort of pushes. Um, and uh, we see Observers going to be coming out, all that good stuff here. Um, same time, Observers out for miniguns, so we can keep an eye on his opponent's side of the field. These pylons are here, and Minigun needs to make sure he adds on a few more pylons back at home to be equivalent to those, because, you know, uh, um, Seed will want be moving out at some point and find those, and that could put Minigun in a difficult position, but we do see the army... Oh, gotta be careful. Observers have uh, been able to see each other, so now Minigun is aware. He's gotta be a little bit more careful um, about this. We do see Immortals popping out here for both players right now, and at this point, you know, Minigun still wants to try to make something happen, poke up, do a little bit of harassment, but he's not going to be relying too much on on uh, these stalkers for making something happen at this point. He's going to be teching up at this point. We see Stargates getting added in here. Uh, same thing for Seed, though. He's continuing up with the Immortal production, and the Observer for Minigun still gets confirmation on this. Now, if he gets lucky and he can, you know, try to move around and ooh, does get to escape there, almost losing the stalker, but nope, does not. And nice 
job from C, taking advantage of the uh, lack of upgrade they need now for Hallucinate. Hallucinate's a phoenix, flies that around, gonna get some scouting intel, get at least confirmation, okay, have you expanded, what sort of tech are you going, all that good stuff. And oh, we <laughs> saw the double stargate for a second, but Minigun's like, no, why? I don't need double stargate, I just need one here. Uh, Void Ray starts to get produced, and now the pylons are going to go down here for um, Minigun. See, he's going to be moving out and securing his side of the map again. But one interesting thing to note, though, is that Seed is uh, continuing up with that stargate play. Plus one air weapons is uh, on the way here, and we've got the double stargate action um, up and running. So we'll be seeing the air-on-air -air action uh, come out for Minigun and C. Now, both pretty much even in their uh, um, respective supplies, more or less, but let's check out that Harvester count. We can see how much more uh, Minigun is ahead than uh, uh, um, Seed, especially in that count there. 44 probes to the 39. He's had his natural expansion up much longer, so that's allowed him to have a stronger economy. And both players taking advantage of the scouting intel. And, ooh, this is cool. He actually hallucinates a oracle to kind of scare uh, um, a minigun, thinking, oh, I'm going to be able to, you know, come in there and, and harass you, so you better be warping in back here and pay attention to this. But, no, nope, in reality, it's just a hallucinate. And the oracles are, are very fast units there, um, so there's nothing wrong with, with uh, using the oracle hallucination uh, to kind of mess with your opponent. Um, and we see a third base going to be coming out, and guess what? Great scouting from Minigun does get confirmation that that is uh, taking place. Void Ray starting to move out, and it looks like uh, Seed wanted to kind of move across the map a little bit, took control of his watchtower, but saw that stalker and was like, oh, okay, I'm going to fall back a little bit. Still have control of my side of the map here, and we see Zelt take control. And this is kind of that, that div uh, divided line I was talking about earlier. Um, Minigun's got a much more kind of um, fast mobile army out here and we see he does get up on the high ground with his stalkers able to blink one down on the low ground to help lock that area down uh, we do see a, a real oracle swinging her um i guess what is that a, a female male i couldn't really tell actually at this point uh oracle swinging her way around um over we'll get to scout this third base same time stalkers poke up here get confirmation where the army is but blink out of there again so both players going for that third base, and they're going for very similar army compositions here. If we, you know, check out those unit supplies, four mortals for Seed, three for Minigun here, and uh, we see Seed is ahead in that um, Void Ray count, five to four, but Oracle's getting in here, doing some damage, already up to five kills, and that's, that um, Pulsar Beam does so much damage so quickly here, so very, very nice job there. I just killed off nine probes already here, doing this kind of harassment. Now the Void Rays will be able to intercept, and take out that oracle so no more damage there but still doing those you know because he's got the double stargate it's not hurting his void ray production to be able to go okay i'm gonna still slip in one oracle there and then have my other one still build the void rays compared to minigun who only has the one stargate up and running at this point yes he does have blink uh, which allows him to be out in the field allows him to be able to try to do some harassment but when it comes down to the actual engagement, it's going to be a little bit tough here because that Void Ray count is getting higher and higher here for Seed. He's also got the uh, Fleet Vegan Templar Archives getting another Forge. He's just going to be going for kind of mass upgrades. And there the Phoenix gets to get in here, scout around, gets confirmation. There's the Fleet Beacon. There's the a third Stargate, Templar Archives, and a lot more gates. So uh, we can see that Seed is ready to start to get uh, into that kind of aggressive position at this point in time. And, Minigun here as a decent force. His Void Ray count's getting stronger and stronger. He's got the double Stargate here, and we do see he's adding on a lot more gates, but, um, ooh, okay. We do see that uh, Psionic Storm is going to be researched here from Minigun. Same thing can be said here for Seed. Both are going to be going for this kind of um, Stargate style, or this, yeah, the Stargate Templar base play. Uh, they are going to have a couple of gateway units mixed in there. The Zealots, the Immortals, the Stalkers there. Um, Mortals course robotics, but you know the storms are going to be very important here for dropping down and doing some damage um, You know to the void rays to all the army underneath um, Stalker's still doing a good job intercepting any probes that try to move out and oh look at this Seed trying to take a uh, expansion over in the right hand corner there, but not gonna happen so this does prompt um, seed to move out, clean up these stalkers at this point. Same time, there's another wave of stalkers going to be moving into that middle line here, and now Seed chased those guys away, but realizing that there are stalkers is natural, does go for the warp in with one zealot here. 
has started to add in some Pokemon cans, but this is great harassment from Minigun. He has now started to uh, pull ahead in that Harvester's Kill, and at the same time, sending the next wave on over here to that third base. Now, there is the uh, Mothership there, as well as the cannons to deal with this. The rest of the army is back on over here, and the Tempest have been revealed here, so he knows what he's up against. Both players are going for that Tempest style of play, but we do see 16, 17, might even get an 18th if he's lucky, and Ooh, does get 18 kills there for that Harvester count, so Minigun looking very, very strong in that sense, and again, Harvester count ahead in Minigun's favor at uh, 72 to 62. We do see kind of a, a couple of zealots over here. will get cleaned up there. It does take out a Stalker, but that's really not that big of a deal for Minigun. He's got the Tempest getting added in here. He is sitting only at plus one weapon uh, at the same time see plus one weapons for seed but he, he is a little bit quicker in getting his plus two uh, weapons out now one thing that minigun does have going for him in this sense is he's already getting that those protoss shields while even though seed had gotten uh, a, another forge he's actually got two forges here uh, he's been neglecting them all together and not opted for any protoss uh, shields uh, we see he has taken a, a hidden expansion down here in the bottom right this is his fourth base um, Minigun could kind of assume that this would be an expansion. He's taking a little bit more of a safer one here. Um, it's much easier to defend this one, but it's harder to be able to kind of go and get your, your fifth base from this point. I mean, you can go for this one, which we already see a pylon going there. Um, confirmation has come out now from Minigun. He knows that Seed is taking this. And continuing up, more Stargates getting added in, more Tempest being added on here, and plus two weapons should be finishing up for their air fleet very, very soon. But let's get the, that air count again. What? Wow, um, eight Tempest right now for Seed here, seven Void Rays, and uh, only seeing a two High Templar in all this, but still uh, ahead in that Immortal Count, and they're more or less even in Stalkers at this point. Um, we also see eight Void Rays for Minigun. He's only got five Tempest, um, a little bit more of the High Templar. The High Templar aren't going to be as effective, though. Once we start getting a little bit further into it and uh, it comes down to the battle because the range on the Tempest is insane. They have a range of 15 here. So as long as you have vision and use uh, your observers to your advantage, I think, yeah, um, Minigun does have two out right now. And he's sending his, his uh, Zealots and Immortals out to kind of engage. Whoop, whoop, there goes the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he gets to take out that one observer there, so very nice play, um, and when that happened, that did uh, kind of um, force Minigun to move back with his zealots and uh, his immortals. So he's like, I want to sacrifice them, but I want to sacrifice them so they do damage. And, oh, he does kind of reveal them here. Tempest can be uh, making quick work of those immortal skills. Zealots, though, in the back don't have charge or anything like that, so they're slowly waddling their way forward here, and that is forcing more units to fall back at this point. At the same time, here is that air fleet moving their way forward. Tempests are going to be very, very key in this engagement here. Storm's going to get dropped down here. Very nice play, and ooh, even uses that time warp, but he's going to lose his motion core, and nice use of the hallucinate there. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, they aren't hallucinate. They look like they're hallucinating for a second. But no, they're just using their uh, prismatic alignment there. And we do see that nice job with the uh, Immortals. We're able to take out that natural expansion. There's not much resources there, but the gas is what is important at that point in time. And we do see that uh, Storm's getting dropped down on both ground forces here. This fourth base here for Minigun is going to have to be forfeit there. There's not much you can do to save this. We do see that the Mothership core did get upgraded into the uh, plain old Mothership here, so that does cloak all of his units. One thing that uh, Seed has to be very aware of, he doesn't... Uh, um, have his Mothership core alive anymore. Uh, he knows that there is an expansion up here and looks like that is where he wants to go. At the same time, that wave of charge lines has moved down into the uh, bottom right hand side. There are some cannons here, some zealots getting worked in to help out. And the Protoss shields helping out a little bit here to uh, deal with it. And wow, look at that attack animation now um, from the Immortal uh, onto the Nexus. That was actually really, really cool. At the same time, Zelda's going to be swinging around trying to engage at this expansion, but with all of those Tempests and all those uh, Void Rays there, he won't be able to really make much happen with that. Again, more and more waves of Zelda's going to get worked in, forcing Seed to have to deal with this. Again and again, another wave of Zealots get worked in here, and I have to say, their attack animations and the way that they've changed things, the way the death animation has occurred, 
is, is definitely been stepped up in Hardest Form than it was in Wings of Liberty. But continuing up, Miniguns just kind of going for mass upgrades at this point here. Uh, continuing up getting more and more Tempest. And is going to be going for that Gravity Drive, getting that Warp Prism speed here. Uh, allowing him to kind of get out there, do a little bit more harassment. We do see the uh, Nexus at the Natural getting thrown down so he can take advantage of this gas, of these minerals here. Which are very, very important. At the same time, we do see the Double Expansion is going to be going down again for Minigun. But his income is... is kind of hurting because of this because he has the long distance mine from here this does finish up so we will start to even back up in that uh, regard one lone uh, a zealot is going to be dealing with this uh, pylon but again one thing to keep in mind is that seed is forgetting his uh, protoss shields yeah he's got uh, plus two weapons but where are the rest of his upgrades he's been hurting for uh, economy at this point in time you know he still has a very strong tempest army that he's been able to keep alive up to 18 here um, so this is actually, that's the key core um, units that these players are relying on in their army, is Tempest. Um, he does have another Mothership core. Both players have a very high uh, count for their high Templars, uh, 6 and 8 respectively. Um, but that Templist count is getting higher and higher for Seed. He's going to take another expansion. And this puts him in a very um, good defensive position. You know, it makes it really hard for Minigun to kind of push in too because uh, he does have good vision here. He is able to... Oh, Sentry, no problem there. At the same time, a couple of zealots trying to move into the main base, but uh, using the force fields, very, very nice. Using some zealots here to help out, and we'll be able to clean those guys up, preventing any scouting, preventing any uh, uh, kind of harassment. At the same time, Stalker and Zealot are, are um, going to town against each other. Zealot doing a great job uh, tearing apart him, and there's the uh, mothership has been warped in now. Um, where are we sitting in the observers? We see at least one with Miniguns Army. Uh, he does have three still out on the field. At the same time, there is one right now uh, with Seed's army. And, you know, we throwing those pylons forward. Both players are, like, placing their pylons uh, in, in kind of uh, vision of each other. They, they are pretty much aware. And so Seed cancels it, just going, all right, I'm not going to deal with it. Uh, same time, that Zealot and Sentry force are going to move across that help protect the base. They will get killed off, but that's not, really not that big of a deal. But this puts uh, um, Seed in a difficult position because now... Uh, we can see Minigun Siege up at this box. Wow. Immediately goes for the Nexus. Takes it out very, very quickly. And now he can just fall back going, alright, I can get a good position to defend against your army that will be trying to intercept. And continuing up with their upgrades, both players. A lot of probes. What are you doing, probes? Storms go down and he's basically just content sacrificing those at that point to try to draw, allowing those High Templar of his own to get in there, do some feedbacks, do some storms. But now the uh, High Templar count is in favor of Minigun. Storm gets dropped down, but he's only got two left for seed here. Tempest moving the right forward. We do see Minigun gets the first shot off with the Tempest, but now his mothership does get sniped off. It is now only... Oh, good feedback! Not going to allow any sort of, of uh, use of that mothership much longer. They're using um, a nice feedback on the Storm's going to get dropped down on all the Tempest, and Void Rays are charging up here. We do see the Tempest in the back to so much damage, and GG gets called. Seed unable to keep up in that air battle. Does have to tag out there, so very, very um, epic air battle between the two. But looking at those two guys' armies, looking at the way they played their game, Minigun shows why he is one of the best Heartless Swarm players out there right now. Um, if you guys haven't seen some of the screenshots from some of the GM leagues there, we've seen top um, 10 or so, top 16, are all Koreans except for Minigun. And so this kind of goes to show how well he has been doing in Heart of the Swarm. And uh, we see the air upgrades for Seed. He's sitting there at two, uh, a plus two attack. He finally got that plus one plasma shield at the end. But at the same time, Minigun sitting there plus three weapons, plus three plasma shield, and plus one armor there. So his air fleet was looking really good. He did a great job with uh, his High Templar and did not panic when he lost his expansions. He's like, you know what? My army's still alive. I'm doing very good here. He did a great job with that harassment, sending the Zealots down to the bottom corner there and really showed, you know, this is a really unique and cool way to... Uh, see how PvP has progressed. It's no longer the Colossus Wars. It's now turned into 
a much more of a siege line kind of war, except your siege line is much more mobile with the Tempest, with that range of 15, and, uh, you know, helped out keeping up with those upgrades. That's one thing that Seed neglected pretty much all game long, was finally trying to get that plus three air weapons, but two forges that really did nothing all game long. So a couple of Tempest, oh, three Tempest back at home as well. What was the final Tempest count there? So actually their Tempest count was even. Um, if, you know, the, the extra Tempest had been rallied maybe to the front, it would have been a little bit easier. He had some stalkers there. He could have keep, kept fighting there. The problem is once this army goes down and Miniguns Tempest pretty much left unscathed, um, he would have been in a lot of trouble and had not much resource to remax while Minigun was sitting pretty there. He had left a lot of High Templar, still for Storms, uh, had the Void Rays do a great job with their Prismatic alignment there um, to do extra damage versus those armored units, um, which are the Tempest. So that, you know, did a great, great job from both players, but Minigun took it in the end there. So great game between the two. Um, it'll be really cool to see how these guys do. Of course, Minigun is playing in one of the Kings of the Beta tournaments coming out, um, hosted by uh, Day9 and TL. Um, Team Liquid there for their Heart of the Swarm launch party that they're doing, uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, also, I'll be bringing you guys a PBT coming up next week, so subscribe to youtube.com slash nanman if you guys want to see more Heart of the Swarm stuff. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about the SC2 up and coming, as you can see below me, it's got that little logo there. Um, that is my weekly web show that I do. It goes live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash TheRealNanMan. That's where I also do a lot of live casting. Um, so if you guys enjoy this sort of casting and want to see me cast live events, check that out. You know, hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button, all that good stuff to help show your support for, for what I'm doing. Um, and you can see the Twitters for all that kind of good stuff. Also, youtube.com slash games is where you can find all the other content. Um, I'm going to be doing some um, playthrough of campaigns soon. Um, the StarCraft stuff will go up here on this channel because I'm going to be going through and do all the Brood War campaign hopefully soon. I'm not sure when that's going to start, but you'll be seeing those videos come up as well. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next game.